Okay, boys and girls, and those who haven't decided yet. Welcome back to day, actually day two, but adventure number three from our auction visit. This is a PV amp. It's a PV Triumph 60. When I saw pictures of this amp, I said to myself, this amp is going to be so filthy, this amp has been smoking for years. Because everybody knows that PV amps, especially older ones like late 80s or mid 80s or 70s or whatever, are supposed to look like that. You know, they're black with aluminium colored sides. Well, this is actually like anodized or something. It's actually supposed to look like a gold brass color and the letters at the top are also darkened like that. That is actually what it's supposed to look like. How weird. So, this is tubes. It's got a channel on here that's called Ultra Gain. Let's turn the light down a little bit. Ultra Gain, Crunch Gain, Clean Gain, Equalization and Presence, and Reverb Master. Power on and standby. Alright, we have a foot switch for this too. Let's go around back here. Okay, there's our 8 ohm lead. There's a couple tubes. There's another tube we can see in there. There's some more underneath that black shield, so we're going to open that up and see. One of those weird proprietary ish PV foot switches. Send and receive for effects loop and the hum balance and the ground plus minus thing if you have a bad uh, power issue at your place you're playing where they don't have it grounded and you need to put a death cap in it. So let's uh, take okay, a look at our one foot more switch thing. apparently needs a bath but it has one button to switch between ultra or crunch gain, one to switch between cleaner bypass, and one to turn the reverb on and off. Let's see. Got a reverb tank down there. Looks like it's got some dust bunnies and pet fuzz, but we'll clean that up. But holy cow, the magnet on that speaker. That's a 12 inch speaker. Initially, when I saw it, I said, oh, that's probably a, a scorpion. I don't think so. Scorpions never had that big a magnet. We've seen a few of them on other amps. Let's see, there's a skew number on it up there on that tag. Hmm. Is that a Black Widow speaker, maybe? I don't know. Well, let's turn this on and see if it explodes. And then we'll take it apart and clean it very thoroughly. Alright, so it's plugged in. And I have the foot switch off. Standby. We'll put the equalization at the middle. These feel sticky, so they might be crackly. Um, all the other volumes are down at zero. On. Okay, I got a power light. It's a good sign. We'll give that a minute for the tubes to warm up. I say hopefully this thing doesn't scare the pants off of us when we uh, flip the switch here. Let's take it off the standby. Whoa! Okay, we got some crackling noises. some cracklies. That's okay. That's interesting. This one was just not... There's some... There's some weird oddball noise in this puppy. Something's going on with that, so that one definitely needs cleaned. 
and that's all right. All right, so let's just get a lead here. And give us a, let's go into the low gain side just so I'm less likely to wet my pants. Let's try turning up clean gain. And I hear nothing. Nothing. And on this side. I hear nothing. Now I hear sound. I'm not sure what I'm listening to. So this clean gain does nothing. This might be with the foot switch out. Let's try ultra. Okay, ultra gain pre and post up. Okay. That seems to. Okay, so that part works. And crunch gain doesn't do anything without the foot switch. So I'm going to guess the foot switch is required to get it to do some of these things. So let's just check to see if the reverb works. That would be a yes. All right, cool. All right, we'll plug the foot switch in and then we'll try again. So let me just put it back on standby so it doesn't go kaboom. I'm going to guess this probably hasn't been on in a long time. Usually tube amps that make sizzly noises when you first fire them up. It's not always a sign of illness, but a lot of times it's a sign of the amp sort of coming back to life after a long time of sleep. And those tubes go to warm up and weird things happen. Okay, so foot switch. Let's see what we got now. Go back to on. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Let's get her lead. Okay. And where's the sound? Oh, it was on bypass clean, so there's ultra gain. Okay. And then we'll go to crunch gain, which is at zero. So I'll bring that up a little bit. Okay, that's working. Okay, and then we'll click on this thing to put it on clean. That works. Bright switch is definitely a bright switch. And we'll put our reverb up. Let's see, we got to be in clean to make that work. Reverb's not marked as on. Now it is. Okay, so this is a positive thing. Uh, this should probably just get a bath and a general service and then be in business. So I've heard a lot of positive things about this Ultra Gain if you like an amp that really sustains. Uh, this is your ticket. So we'll start uh, popping a few things apart and we're going to give this a very, very thorough top to bottom cleaning. Okay, so getting the cover off. That's just held on there by that super duty Velcro stuff that PV likes to use, which makes it convenient. It looks like we got some dust rabbits here on our speaker down at the bottom, but that'll just brush out. And then we've got, looks like a drop of hot glue, dead bugs, dirt. What kind of speaker is this? Very cool looking one. Plywood baffle. That's a tough baffle. Made for a speaker this heavy. Well, we'll go unplug the speaker from the back and pop it out of the chassis. And then we'll drop the chassis off the top so I don't think you all need to see how an electric screwdriver works. Okay, so we're making progress. We found uh, two guitar picks, a Fender Heavy, and a Dunlop nylon. This this one's really disgusting. We found a couple of spider nests, a dead Japanese beetle, a couple of other bugs, uh, lots of pet hair, and here's our reverb tank in the can. Right here, I got this out. So let's see what this is. I'm gonna guess this is probably a U.S. Accutronics. They had a good habit of using those. Oh yeah, that's a U.S. Accutronics. 
Cool. That'll need to stay out because we got to wash this reverb bag, which is nice and disgusting too. So we'll drop the chassis and then uh, we'll just proceed to clean this. And the procedure to clean this, it, I could take the camera outside and show you all, but this is not complicated. We take the metal stuff off, take the cabinet outside with the garden hose and our mystical yellow cleaner there, and just scrub the sin out of it. But here's something cool. These are 6L6GCs. These are marked uh, Philips ECG, made in USA. This other tube up here, that that's a China tube. This one is. That's something. I don't know. That's not what I. That's not probably not an original tube. I'm gonna guess that was replaced. Um, but these look like they're probably original, so we'll test those. And we'll unscrew the power cord over here. Let's see if that's over here. I'll be able to drop the chassis and we'll look around on that. Okay, so looking under here, this is a different version of the PC board design that they've used. This one's a little more modular. Um, we have probably our main filter caps, a little bitty reverb transformer. That's kind of a joke. Um, let's see, we got a power tube or a preamp tube there. The others are probably all on the flip side of that board. And it looks like our power tubes are on their own board over here. So this was probably a more modular system they went to in the later days. Um, the bottom of the chassis feels a little sticky. The two power tubes are um, Phillips. This tube is 12AX7A, that's all it says, and that's obviously a China tube. Um, you can recognize them immediately by their little clip. And let's take the cap off of here, where the other tubes like to hide. I don't think, again, I don't know what the date is on this. I don't think this would have been factory loaded with China tubes. In fact, that was one of the things that Hartley did not want to do, is load these things up with China tubes, but you know, they, they might have had to, who knows. Uh, you know, they might have had a stash of military 6L6s, or, you know, maybe it came all with China tubes and then Buddy found the Phillips tubes, I don't know. Okay, so the 12AT7 says PV Super T's made in USA. That's what I was expecting. I was expecting these PV Super tubes. Um, actually, even across the board, like Super 6's in the power amp section. Uh, I'm not even going to plug it back in yet because we're going to clean those and test them all. Okay, the 12AX7 here is China. The 12AX7 here is China. And this 12AX7 here is China. So apparently by this point the 12AX7s were uh, being imported. So that's fine. We'll do a quick tube test uh, and we're going to take all these tubes out and wipe the, this off. This feels sticky underneath, but we'll take the cabinet outside and give it a thorough bath. Let me see if I can see any codes or anything interesting on the power transformers that might give us a clue to its date. We only saw that usually on the older ones. Let's look on the bell covers here. Seven oh five oh two oh seven. This one says seven oh five one eight. 718. So 7051 would be a year that ended in 1, and 7050 would be a date that ended in 0. So this would probably be 1991. That's a guess, but I'm thinking 1991. So, yeah. We will look and see when these uh, existed, and we'll check the date code on the speaker. And Actually, why don't we just do something obvious and stupid that I didn't even think to do. So let me just take these tubes and 
set them off to the side so they won't get hurt. Because if I flip this upside down with its power tubes in place, we'll probably break something, and we don't want to break something. It looks like they actually did a pretty good job of securing the different sockets and things. Um, despite PC board amps having a craptastic reputation, uh, the PV amps still maintain the industrial quality recognition that they deserved for a lot of the products. This is maybe earlier in the cheapening phase, but let's see. I'm looking for inspected buys or anything like that on here. Yeah, I ain't seeing them. Yeah, we might be able to look at the serial number maybe and get that. Let's look and see if we have a serial number. Not back there. Is that the serial number right there? Maybe. Um, it's kind of an inspected by sticker over here, but that's illegible. And how about on the other far side? Nothing. So, um, at this point, my guess is 1991 for this one. So, we'll take the cabinet outside and give it a good scrubbing and bath, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we're back. Um, cleaning the amplifier body, or the chassis, or the... Yeah, well not the chassis, cleaning the um, box, whatever, the cabinet, cabinet, cleaning the cabinet went really well. So now we're going to test the tubes, make sure they're healthy. Um, we have a orange Devo tube tester here, so we'll just pick 6L6 and hit OK, and then we just sit back and wait for anything interesting to happen. It's a pretty boring process, or part of the process. And if you notice, we wipe the dirt off the tubes too while we're doing this. We still have to clean this part up, but the cabinet over there is looking very good. The Tolex on it is actually really nice. There's no um, real rips or tears or anything in it. It's just kind of was, grub, was grubby and it's been thoroughly cleaned. This cleaner that I use uh, is spectacular stuff. We should probably just start selling that. It's fantastic. And okay, so it basically keeps giving us a countdown. Okay, so now it's counted down to seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two, one, and the result is da, 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 da. the tube has a gain factor of ten, or this rates is a ten, so that's a good sign. That's very strong tube according to this. You can argue the accuracies of these versus any tube testers because the reality is you only know if a tube is really a problem until you subject it to the voltages and the things in the amplifier. And we'll wipe the grub off of that. And we'll push the magic button to go again. And uh, I'm going to go through all the tubes, so if there's anything exciting to report, I'll report it. Okay, this tube also checks out as a 10, so probably don't have too many hours on them. That was exciting. So these two are good, and they're pretty well balanced, which is nice, which probably means that home balance circuit is somewhere in the middle, which is great. Let's grab our four 12-inch sevens. And those go 
over here in preamp. Plug in our first one. And then we arrow over to 12AX7 or ECC83, it's double labeled, and we hit OK. And then we wait for the whole process to repeat. With these, it's going to give me two different numbers, one for each triode, since there's two triodes in a 12AX7, two triodes in a 12AU7, two triodes in a 12AT7, and I believe two triodes in a 12AV7 also. You can see the little filament glowing on the side here. These must be a little bit of an earlier china tube. It doesn't look that much different than other ones I've seen before, but hey, if it if it works and it's not broken, we're not going to go too crazy. The stock tubes in here, it actually says 6L6GC and then it says STR387, and they wrote that right on the amp, which are the same numbers as are on the tubes, so I'm going to guess that that is actually the stock tubes, and it's only showing me a 9, so that means the triodes on this are balanced. That's a little rare, and it's usually a good thing, meaning that both sides have equal gain, so two nines is a good, good tube. Let's try one more of our preamp tubes here, and see if we have anything that differentiates. They may have very well at the factory gone through all of the different tubes that they had gotten in the shipment and weeded out any of them that were problematic. Um, Ninety some percent of all the tubes that I see or get my hands on are not perfectly balanced. I get things that are, you know, like 11 and 9 or 8 and 9 or they're usually not that far apart, maybe 7 and 10. I've never had a tube test way up into like the 15 range. I think the highest I've ever seen a tube check out was a 6V6 that checked out as an 11. Supposedly the, the result number, the higher it is, the stronger the tube. Okay, so this one's showing 8. So that one's not quite as hot, but 8's still a very acceptable number. This one starts to poop on the tubes by the time they get down to, I think, uh, 5, it says the tube is worn, and then it's like, you know, 3 or 2, it says the tube is ready to be replaced. And they, I've noticed this tester also will not test vintage 12AX7s correctly. If you put an RCA or an old GE 7025, the low noise ones, it'll fail them every time, even though they work perfectly. So. Go figure that one. If there's any news, I'll come back. Okay, so on the 12A T7, it's showing 8 and 6. All of the 12A X7s were balanced. So, go figure that one. The China tubes were balanced, and this older US tube isn't. Yeah, whatever. They're both good values for triodes. We'll go with it. And then at this point, we're just going to clean the chassis. This is really exciting stuff. When you do sales and service on these, if you're doing the sales end, if you're doing just the service end, sometimes technicians you know, will just fix the problem and ignore the rest. I can't be that way because I'm on the sales end. I want to find a lot of these amps a new home, or I'm going to put them into my collection and they're going to go to shows with me. And quite frankly, I do not want to play a filthy, disgusting looking um, amplifier or have a filthy, disgusting guitar. I'll let my music be the filthy, disgusting part. Not the, uh, not the amplifiers. And this cleaner usually does great jobs of lifting sticky stuff, nicotine, dirt, DNA, oh yeah, that's much better. So, I say really not an exciting part of this job, but just, you know, 
And if you noticed, I tried not to spray any down in the tube sockets, but, you know, just get some uh, cleaner. Brush the surface real good. And then we'll tip it up and we'll do like the knobs and all of that too. Okay, so I've got the whole face plate cleaned up. Um, we scrubbed all of this with the brush. We took every knob off, all that. So now we actually need to clean the pots. We're going to use our Max Pro electronic cleaner lubricant stuff, which usually works spectacularly. And we've got to find where we can get liquid into these pots. And I have a feeling that's going to be a bummer because we're going to have to go this direction and kind of ask for gravity's help. But it looks like these might actually be open on the back. Let me look real careful. Mm. No. Getting cleaner inside of these is going to be an adventure, but we're going to try. And then if I still have some rattly ones, then we'll have to take them apart. So, just a brief puff of cleaner sprayed in there, and then we'll turn it back and forth a whole bunch of Okay, so we've got most of the pots, but it appears to get to these high gain area pots. We're going to have to remove that plate. And that actually is listed, it says right on it, Triumph Preamp Shield. So that's to keep noise out of the high gain preamp area. So we'll have to take that off and get to these pots. But the rest of these, uh, it looks like there's a little bit of an air gap and we're able to get cleaner in there just fine. So I think we're okay. Okay, so three screws and that comes out. And with that, now we can access these pots up here. And it's also a good time to check the solder connections on the preamp tubes that are in this area. This board is all preamp stuff, so it's a good idea to give it a good look. Um, see if there's any obvious issues. Everything looks just fine. PV kind of had a knack for making uh, pretty reliable amps on PC boards, even though reliable amp and tube amp and PC board generally aren't, you know, considered things that go together well. You know, I've got some of the old 80s models and they were cool. So apparently I can get the cleaner to go right in the edge of the pot there and it loosens up. You can just feel how much better it feels once you get some of the cleaner in there. Yeah, see this one's like stiff as a board, and now she's freeing right up, so that's great. A little more. Get carpal tunnel turning these. Seems so at this point I suppose it's okay to start reassembling the amp. We, in our diagnosis, it per you know, look over there. We didn't really find anything dramatic about the amp. It had some scratchy, noisy pots. That's about it. So I think we'll just put contact cleaner in the tube sockets. This is Max Pro contact cleaner. I know somebody's going, you're not using deoxid. If you don't use deoxid, Somebody kills a puppy. I think that's how it goes, is it? The puppies die if you don't use deoxid or you use somebody else's product. Stuff usually evaporates quick. I'm not sure what the weird goobers it leaves behind, but that'll clean those up. And uh, we can just put the tubes back in. And put it back in the cabinet. So 12AX7A. Twelve AX seven there. Twelve 
a X7 here. Uh oh. Doesn't go in right. Don't force it. <laughs> go. 12A T7. Goes here. And then another 12A X7 goes back here. And then these four have the cap on them. And the cap has spiders on it, so we're going to clean the spiders off the cap. Okay, so the next step is to remount our mammoth speaker. The part number on this big boy checks out to actually be a PV Scorpion speaker, which I thought it would be based on what it looked like, but this magnet, holy cow, that magnet's enormous. <laughs> Makes this one hefty, hefty speaker to lift, I'll tell you that much. But, um, let's see, it was in the cabinet this way. So the holes come off the side here so they can catch the speaker lead. So, see if I hang in this back in there. And if this doesn't work, we're going to have to lay the cabinet on its back to see if we can get this together. Let's see. That or we're going to break our wrist trying. It's a very, very hefty speaker, my friends. A very, very hefty speaker. Okay. Can we get a half a turn on that screw? Can we? Can we? We can just get it to catch in the T nut. And we did. So great. Now I got some kind of support. And we'll go hang this one in the peanut and then we'll put the other ones in there. And then we can tighten it up. Yeah, I would recommend if you don't have a strong wrist, uh, lay this cabinet on its back. This magnet and this speaker is really heavy. I mean really heavy. Um, you know, a normal guitar speaker, you can easily pick it up by the magnet and wave it around with one hand. Uh, not this one. Just to say that. So, this is a type of Scorpion speaker. It's a, it's an 8 ohm Scorpion, based on the part number. But what a monster magnet. Okay, anyway. Tighten that up, and move on to the next step. Okay, so... At this point our PV Triumph 60 is fixed up and I suppose we're just going to sound check it and make sure it works. I've got it on the clean gain channel and I've got the volume at like one and a half or two because it's loud. The reverb's on and it's loud. Holy cow. So let's just take a quick check on the pots. Take it 
rough, clean, Troy crunch gain. Should, and we have the gain fairly low. sustains forever. This is a rock and roll amp. Uh, apparently, this is a rock and roll amp. All right, cool. <laughs> 